Before we start our discussion, I am Jonaline G. Padua, currently taking up Bachelor of Library and Information Science student of the NESCAS. Basic Research Methods for Librarians Research and Librarianship So here is the table of contents of Research and Librarianship, page 1 to 10. First is research record. It is the consensus of numbers of those individuals who have assessed the previous research of libraries is that quantity and quality have left something to be desired. In is described library research as non-cumulative, fragmentary, generally weak and relentlessly oriented to immediate practice. However, Neil stated, librarianship is information poor, information profession, Decisions are routinely not supported by the evidence of well-designed investigation. Research is in the field of poor communicated, understood, and applied. So in this chapter, we will concern itself only with the relatively recent record of library research. Readers wishing to learn more about history of library science research may wish to consult Jackson Brief History Research. Definition of research. There's a lot of definition of research. One of these is Merriam Webster Online Dictionary. Merriam defined it as studious inquiry or examination, especially investigation or experimentation, aimed at the discovery of interpretation of facts, revision of accepted of theories or laws, in the light of new facts or practical application of such as revised theories or laws. So according to Miriam, you cannot just put information right away in your research without further investigation and where those information came from or if that information came from the legit sources. Second is Hillway. In his introductory text on research methods, he defined research as a method of study by which through the careful and exhaustive investigation of all the ascertainable evidence bearing upon a definable problem, we reach solution to that problem. So according to Hillway, you must be careful to those evidence that may cause problem in your research. Further investigation may occur and have a better outcome. On the other hand, Molly stated that research is best conceived as the process of arriving at dependable solution to problems through the plan and systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data. So according to Molly, through the plan and systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data, it can help to find a solution to a certain problem in your research. The general definition suggests that there are at least two major types of research and these are basic research and applied research. First is basic research. Basic research is pure, theoretical, or scientific research, primarily interested in driving knowledge and is at most only directly involved with how that knowledge will apply to specific practical or real problems. Basic research is also particularly if quantitative in nature. It's usually designed so as to produce new knowledge that is generalizable. To make it short, basic research is a systematic study directed toward greater knowledge or understanding the fundamental aspect and application. Second is applied research. Applied research encompasses a variety of specific research techniques, such as system and analysis and operation research. Applied research emphasizes the solving of specific problems in real situations. Applied research, also much of the library-related research, has been applied research dealing with everything from evaluating book collections to analyzing automated circulation systems. To understand further, applied research refers or focuses to scientific study and also this kind of research always seek to solve practical problems in real situation. Research can also be dichotomized as quantitative and qualitative research. What is quantitative research? It is a method involve a problem-solving approach that is highly structured in nature and that relies on the quantification of concepts 
were possible for purpose of measurement and devaluation. So, quantitative research is the process of collecting and analyzing numerical data. It also focuses in problem solving. While qualitative research, methods focus on observing events from the perspective of those involved and attempt to understand why individuals is behave as they do. Furthermore, qualitative research is more unmeasured by its quality and quantity. Next is types of previous library research. Ralph Bills categorized library literature into tripartite classification of glad tidings, testimony, and research that noted there was little of the last. Also, Gold Lore categorized library literature as one, a relatively small body of published research as defined in the narrow sense. Second is a larger amount of published and unpublished services studies or applied research. Three, an even larger number of reports or description of specific situation or simply opinions. And lastly, original data. So here is a timeline of previous library research according to year. On 1977 to 1988, Matthias described research performed by the U.S. Department of Education along with analyzing the products of the research. 1976 to 1988, McClure and Bishop provided a useful summary of reports published on this year related to the status of research and librarianship. 1990 to 1999, Bao analyzed and published the CNRL or College and Research Libraries and GAL, or stands for Journal of Academic Librarianship. And lastly, 2003 to 2005, Heldreth and ITAC analyzed 206 randomly selected articles and 23. LIS journals publish using 35 factors, such as authorship, topic, types of research, data collection methods, and etc. Hader and Pime examined librarianship and non-librarianship journals published in 2005 to identify the strategies in data collection techniques used in the studies. In the 1985 analysis, 55.9% of the articles reported no empirical research, which may indicate that discussion and theoretical papers were less likely to be published in 2005. Haider and Pime reported that qualitative approaches, including case studies and ethnography, are now well established. Bibliometrics are still valuable tools of investigation and the largely quantitative technique of transaction, lag analysis, has grown rapidly to become a major instrument. And lastly, Fidel analyzed 465 articles published in four LIS research journals. 5% or 22 articles use the Mixed Methods Research or MMR approach, which integrates qualitative and quantitative methods in one study. Limitations of Preview Library Research Unfortunately, the past research record of library and information science is not exemplary. It has been easier to find criticism of library research than praise. So I can say that in this era, there's a lot of criticism than complementing or praising the library research. Quadra identified shortcomings in library and information science research. So far as purpose is concerned, he noted a failure to ask the right question and to establish a proper theoretical foundation for later research or application. When there are limitations of preview library research, there is always shortcomings. So Garrison acknowledging that considerable advances had been made in public library research in the previous decade went to itemize several shortcomings of research, including the following. First is researchers have not disseminated the results adequately. Second is practitioners have not kept up with the research results that had been reported. Third is the profession have been too content with non-research reports. Fourth is the audiences of research journals have been too limited. Fifth is dissertation have seldom had any relationship to previous or subsequent research. 
And lastly, the impact of reported research has been weakened due to poor bibliographic control and inadequate availability of copies. Rationale for basic research in library and information science. So, under rationale for basic research in library and information science, there is growth of profession. As indicated earlier, one of the major purposes of basic research is to create new knowledge. Or as stated by Molly, it is the purpose of science to go beyond experience and common sense, which frequently are quite limited and inadequate, and often quite incorrect for advancing knowledge, for promoting progress, and for enabling man to relate more effectively to his environment, to accomplish his purposes, and to resolve his conflicts. The higher growth of profession, the higher you can conclude that LIS student and graduates has been improved and get the high proficiency. Second is management. Basic research has more to offer than the expansion and refinement of the profession theoretical underpinnings. Much of the knowledge created as the result of basic research is likely to have a practical application for the improvement of practices in a actual library operations. Swisher argued that there is no more important activity than acquiring new information that may now or someday assist in the goal of improving our professional decision-making. Assuming the responsibility of practical research is probably the most important role a librarian can accept. Third is reading research reports. Another benefit of having a reasonable mastery of basic research method is that it should allow one to understand and critically evaluate the research reports of others. According to Swisher, the reader who understands the process of research will question much more about the literature in general and correctly identify the working limitation of the literature. Improved service to researchers Yet another advantage to having a basic knowledge of research methods, at least for those librarians who serve researchers, is the greater understanding of the needs of researchers provided by this awareness. Only when the librarian knows the basic process which a researcher utilizes, can the researcher's needs be fully anticipated and met. Lastly is personal benefits. Perhaps, most important among the benefits one could to realize from a study of research methods is the ability to conduct research. For many librarians, especially in academic setting, research activities are not only desirable but necessity. A number of academic institutions expect their professional librarians to meet the same requirements for promotion and tenure as their regular teaching faculty and this usually include research and publishing. Those are the five components of rational basic research in library and information science. The future of library research. Shara noted that research in librarianship is still relatively young. Clear conception of the goals, objectives and methodologies of library science research are only now beginning to be sol solidarity formulated. Research is too important to be left to dilettantes and matters, and its pursuit should be reserved for those who are qualified for it by aptitude, education, and motivation. And lastly, a scientific part of the course study for a graduate student in librarianship should be acquiring of a knowledge of the principle and methods of research applied to the investigation of library problems. In a study conducted by Demetrov, she reported that special libraries identified the following as the top barriers to their involvement in research activities. The lack of management support of research, the lack of money or funding for research skills, and lack of research ideas. If libraries and other employers are going to expect librarians to equip themselves to do research, then they must be prepared to provide appropriate incentives, support, and rewards. For example, release time, special leaves, and sabbaticals can be arranged to allow more time for research. 
as a student of UNESCO's and aspirant librarian, this ebook or subject helped me to learn more and acquire knowledge in order for me to be ready in the future. It helps me hone my capabilities and skills in this subject. And after finishing the summary, I can say that I've learned a lot and got some tips on how to start or do research. Once again, I'm Junaline G. Padua of 3A, and thank you for watching.